gonna give you the nail tutorial that was requested. This is what my nails look like right now. So a little history of my nails. I did have acrylics the last couple of months. Um, I had two or three sets, so, and then I ended up doing my own gel manicure. With that, I already knew that my nails were gonna be weak, so I decided just to do my own. My nails got weak, and a lot of them ended up ripping and cracking. Lots of you said that you wanted to see how I take off my nail polish. I will be 100% honest with you. I took a shower, and as you can see, my leopard print right there design is coming off, so I just peel it off. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I don't peel off all my polish. What I end up doing when I do have to take off my nail polish is I take some cotton ball, and I also use 100% acetone. These little random clips, and you could also use foil, but what I like to do is just take the acetone, soak up the cotton ball, and say for instance this nail, I'll place it right here. I have some cotton balls over here from the last time. <laughs> so then I'll place it right here, and then I have these little clips, and instead of wasting foil, I just clip these on, and they put pressure onto my nail. Sometimes with the foil, it gets loose, and these just kind of stay on, and I can move my hands all around. And you could also use these on your toes as well. It's just easy when you're watching TV, and you just need to take off your nail polish. I have a bunch these before these are so old do not buy these because it does come with a little strip of cotton it sucks it doesn't absorb anything it is so flat look at that it's non-existent I don't recommend these at all this is the way to go I like how it gives pressure feel the cotton ball surrounding my finger I feel like it just takes it off much faster and here I don't know I feel like it gets loose so quick I'll link these down below and that's how I take off my polish and I just have this right here. I've had this for probably over five years. There's a little bit of rust on there and I just push the rest of the nail polish off and it'll come off. Now a huge tip that I will tell you is that you take your file and you slightly buff off the top coat, not all the way. Then you will place your cotton on top soaked with the acetone and then it'll come off much faster. Next up, I like to put on my Neutrogena Hydro Boost. I need to buy another bottle. It's like my favorite, and I like to place this on my hands just so I can protect them because regardless of how strong the light or not, you still are placing this over your hands. I try not to get it all on my nails. I mean, right now I was kind of sloppy with it. I do this whenever I do my own gel manicure at home. I definitely want to start bringing my own to the nail salon when I get it done. I think it's just important just to be better safe than sorry. Now, this is probably one of my favorite discoveries this year, and it's a Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover. I am obsessed with it. You only have to use it for like 15 seconds, I believe. Yeah, after 15 seconds. So I like to place them just at my cuticles and you push them back from the years of doing my nails and then also seeing comments, etc. I have realized you don't wanna cut all your cuticle off and you just wanna push them back. Sometimes I do cut them, I'm not gonna lie, it's when they're I don't know when I have a lot, but this product has helped so much. So I've been using this and then I just use my same exact pusher and I kind of push it back as well. Just start pushing back any dead skin or anything that might be on my nails. If I have any skin that's kind of hanging, I do use my cuticle nippers. Uh, these ones are from Revlon. I bought some Tweezer Man and they were probably like about $28. I wanted to invest in some good products and they ended up breaking you guys. Like, like I was pretty in shock because that's a very known brand and it's very pricey. My Revlon ones have been lasting. They went ahead and sent them over and I've been using those ones. Just push back any skin, any cuticle, or anything on my nail. I do have a bag of these little cotton wipes and they basically won't have anything stick. So there's not gonna be any lint. They're very handy. And I didn't even have to purchase these. These came free in, I think when I bought my light. So they've lasted a really long time. Take some alcohol. This one's just in a random old bottle. This is when Sephora used to sell OPI so long ago. I just spray them down and you'll notice that I literally clean my nails so many times. That's what really just upholds my manicure and everything. Now my cuticles are pushed back. I'll kind of just check them out, see if there's anything hanging and they look nice and clean. Now I just take this nail file, honestly, I don't know what grit. I really don't know, it has a pretty good grit. I think people say 8100. And I just use it to shape my nails. Now my nail did end up 
kind of splitting right here. So it kind of goes like in a funky shape. So I'm gonna have to like work around it. And then I knew they were gonna split because they were so weak from the acrylic, um, but what can you do? So I'm just gonna kind of have to file around it. And if it's a funky shape, no big deal. Straight on the side and kind of round it out and then go straight across. Do whatever shape you want. I'm not keeping too much length. Um, it's basically like I'm starting from scratch again because they were so weak. Now this is an old buffer. This is just what I have. What I do is I just take like the more grittier side of this buffer, go over my nail a little just to kind of even it out in case it's, I don't know, kind of bumpy. Like I said, I did the acrylic so I don't go over it like crazy, smooth it out a bit. I know sometimes people go over with a nail file to give themselves some grip, but I never do that to my nails. Now I just kind of dust everything off, kind of wipe down my area. Again, you guys, I go back into the alcohol spray because I don't want any of the grit from here, from the file or anything to get on the nail polish. That used to be my problem. I used to have like these little bumps everywhere and I realized that it was from the file. Bond Aid, and this is something that just helps dehydrate the nail. I just place it all over my nails. I make sure I get a good amount. It has a very strong scent, FYI. Why I do this is I usually do my designs first because that's when I have the most patience. This is the light that I use. I got this off of Amazon. Once you stick your finger in, the light goes. My favorite base coat is the OPI. It is very thin. My main suggestion is to always put a thin coat of everything. This one has worked out so well. Like I said, it is a very, very thin gel polish and I love that. When you do thick coats on your nails, it is not good. I'm telling you, it's gonna be game over. And if you ever get anything towards your cuticle, you wanna make sure that you clean it up somehow, even if it's with your finger, uh, maybe an orange stick. I mainly do a brush as well. I kinda go back and forth between what works for me and just almost hit right at that edge, but I don't, and that's honestly the key. Sometimes when you see manicures online, you will notice a slight gap with nail polish. That's what makes it last because it won't lift. Now say for instance, if I went over my skin, you can take the orange stick and then just take off any excess around. Use a brush as well. Even if you get it on the sides right here, you want to make sure that you take it off because that is giving any sort of way for it to lift afterwards. I know that some people seal the end. I mean, you can do that, but when you have very short nails like this, it tends to be very hard. You can get it on your skin. So I can do it, but I don't do it all the time. Cure my whole entire hand, and I do it for about 30 seconds. Paint my nails with that leopard design that you guys wanted to see. Alpine Snow, honestly, I've used all types of brands because today I'm also going to be using Orly. And then another brand that I use is Gelish. So far, I haven't had any issues with the gel polishes. Put on a very thin coat. Now, when I talk about about don't hit the skin, I'm talking about do not hit it. That is the main tip because when you try to get so close, I am telling you it is not worth it. I know you want it as close as possible. Okay, that's a little bit too much polish. You wanna use very, very little, like very thin coats. Shoot, I already got it on my cuticle, I see it. It's okay, I'll clean it up right now. Very thin coats. Do not do one thick coat, that's not gonna help. Now you can see, I got it on my cuticle. So I'll usually take my nail, since this one is clean, and I'll go across and I'll take it away. And then I'm gonna cure it. I'm telling you, it's patience. For this finger, I'm gonna try a different type of leopard just to kind of give you a different design. And on my thumb, I'm gonna be taking the color Do You Take Layaway from OPI, just a really nice neutral shade, placing that on the thumb. And I'm gonna do white spotted leopard with the black around, and I'm gonna cure it. I like to cure mine quite a bit, which is why I like to use the SPF as well. Back into a second coat of the white. Again, do not touch the cuticle. Just carefully put this one on. All these little dotting tools right here, you can get them on Amazon. Bead holder that I'll use for like glitter if I do glitter designs, but I'll just flip it over. I take so many different surfaces, you guys, even open eyelash boxes. I'm gonna be using the black, so I'm just gonna place a little dollop right there. Then I'm gonna take the brown shade. This one's Orly Smart Gels in the shade Coffee Break. Now, I don't know if they sell this color because I've had it for so long. A little bit of Alpine Snow. 
I'm gonna pick my fine point one. This one is my most like precise dotter. It's very, very thin. You can use larger ones as well. All depends on how much space and how big you want it. Now for this one, you're just gonna do random blobs. So I'm gonna go into the brown, randomly making little random blobs all around. Again, since this is gel polish, do them nice and thin. You don't want them too thick. Now, if the brown isn't too pigmented, it's okay. You can always go back into another round. We're gonna do some random ones right here. We're also gonna do some random little black markings which help fill in the space. I'm gonna just take one of these little wipes and wipe it dry. Now that's why I like these because these will not have any lint on them. Now we're gonna go into our black shade. Now for this, you're gonna do about three swipes around each brown. Now you can do one and two, which I'll show you. I just call them C's. Like for instance, I'll do, hmm, let's do this one into a C. What I mean by that is I'm gonna go, oh shoot, I was supposed to cure it. Hold on, let me cure this. Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't do nail tutorials. I just cure it really quick. Let's go back into the black. Oh my goodness, I hope I didn't really mess this one up. Just a little, it's okay. See it out? So I just make like a C this way and a C this way. Like a wannabe C. <laughs> So it's just gonna be like that. Go into this one and we're gonna do a three lines around. So one, you're gonna circle around here, take a space, you're gonna go into two, and then three. So you just make like, you trace it around randomly with three lines instead of two. This one's gonna be three as well. You can make it longer, two, three right here. Now this one I'll go into the C that I was talking about so from the side like a C, just dip in a little bit more. And then we're gonna see it out over here. So just two lines. Maybe not a C, but let's just say two lines. <laughs> Hopefully that C part isn't confusing you. Now all I did was really Google up leopard nail designs, popped up and it was really easy to follow. It honestly just takes patience. Now this one, I'll, since it's on the corner, I'll kind of go around it right here on the other side and then just kind of, kind of connect it because it's on the corner. I'm gonna go into random blobs that help fill in these little spaces. I could probably do another brown one right there so I'm gonna leave it open but right here I'm just gonna do one plain black little blob, one right here, one at the top, and then I'm actually gonna put one more brown blob in there because I don't like how it's empty. So again, you just go back very carefully, wipe it, go back into your brown, put a little bit of brown right here. We're gonna do like a corner one. And then I'll go back into the black afterwards because I wanna cure it first. So we're gonna cure this one right here, back into that black since I have that brown blob right there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it on the outside, it's already cured, so. This is the time where I'll kind of go over the black. I'm like, okay, what needs to be darkened? Any of the blobs just need a little extra oomph. Let's just go over them. This may be a little bit more right here on the new one. And let's just cure that. A little bit more brown just to make it a tad bit more pigmented. We'll cure it one more time and we'll go on to the top coat. For my top coat, I have been using the Apre top coat. I love this because it is a no wipe. Now you can buy this on their site or you can get it on Amazon. I picked Amazon because I have an account and it's easy and it's easy returns. So I went through them and I love it because you don't have to wipe with any alcohol and it just saves time because if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. And before I was using the OPI top coat, I think it's really nice and thin, really nice and shiny. I wanted to show you guys this option. Now it is a thicker top coat, so I always make sure to really wipe off any excess because it can make the nail kind of thick. So just make sure you wipe it off and do another thin coat. I'm just gonna seal the nail and the same rules apply. Like don't get it on your cuticle, don't get it on your skin at all. Um, just be very careful. Here is the nail, it's already nice and set. So now I'm gonna go on to my thumb, make a design from there, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do solid polish and I'll just figure it out from there. But there you go, super simple leopard nail design.
I am finally done. So I went ahead and did the top coat on all of my nails and I will tell you right now, this nail, it's not my favorite. I put the white, I thought it was gonna accent really cute but I didn't like the way it looked. So I went ahead and put the brown over the white and I'm just gonna keep it just for right now but this is the hand I like. So it's two leopard and then a tan nail and white and a tan. This is what the final product looks like and I wanna do holiday nails. Um, if anything, I'll probably put my holiday design on my Instagram and I can always do that as well but yeah, here we go. Hopefully you guys like it and enjoyed and you guys enjoyed my tips and tricks. Um, now afterwards, I will just add on some cuticle oil. I just have the OPI Pro Spa. This is just a skincare hands and feet nail and cuticle oil right here. They sent this to me, so I've been using this and I've been really enjoying it. And then I like to do a good mask. My hands have been pretty dry from all the hand sanitizer. I went ahead and picked these up from Amazon and I really like them. This is the intensive one. I'll link them down below. But my hands over here on the sides have been really, really dry. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing this mask as well and then we'll be all done. This is the final look and I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you finables in the next one. Boop, boop.